Hello. So this is part 3 of my how to journalize series and here we are going to analyze business transactions starting with the first one right here. So on January 1, the owner invested 1000 pesos in the business. And what you want to do is set up your accounting equation first. And if you recall the discussion last time, I mentioned that in every business transaction, at least two account titles are involved. And account titles, I discussed them in the previous video, diba? So here, you have to think of two account titles, minimum, that would explain this transaction. So what do you think would be account titles related to this one? Of course, there is cash, right? Because the owner invested that money. And cash is under what? Assets, right? But you cannot end there because under double entry system, you need at least two, minimum of two. So what do you think would be the other account title? So you have to remember that this money, the 1000 right here, was given by the owner, which is someone inside the company. So between liabilities and equity, you should be writing something under equity. So what do you think would be an account title under equity connected to this uh, transaction? It is capital. So now you have two account titles. And what you want to do next is try to determine the movement of these account titles. For cash, what do you think happened to cash? Increase, decrease. Okay, so for that one, you have to remember the concept I mentioned in the very first video, which is business entity concept. And there, I stress that in transactions, you are the business and you are not the owner. Because here, if you use the point of view of the owner, cash decrease went down, right? But if you are the business, you receive the money from the owner. So in your point of view as a business, cash increase, right? And since you are using the point of view of the business, cash increase. How about capital? Capital here increase because there is placement from the owner. And after that, what you will do is determine the effect of this movement to your element. So if cash increase, what happens to asset? It will increase by 1000. And if capital increase, what happens to your equity? Your equity will increase by 1000. And try to substitute the amount now in the equation. Assets, 1000 equals liability of 0 plus equity of 1000 so equal left side is 1000 right side is 1000 equal you have to remember that in every transaction you should be able to maintain the equality of your accounting equation so that's one transaction that we were able to analyze now let's have another owner withdrew 100 from the business automatically you have cash because it is cash which was pulled out here so cash what happened to cash? Increase, decrease. You are using the point of view of the business again, not the owner. So, it's like you looking at the owner and then taking the money from you. So, cash decrease. And since this transaction is still about the owner, you will touch on your equity. But this time, you are withdrawing the money, not investing. So, instead of capital, you will use drawing. What happened to your withdrawals? It increased, right? So, drawing increased and what you will do next is determine the effect of this one to your asset this will lead to a decrease in your assets by 100 how about the increase in your drawing what will happen to your equity of course it will decrease because as mentioned in the previous video capital and revenue if they are increased they will increase your equity while drawing an expense, if they are increased, they will decrease your equity. So let's jump to another transaction. Paid salaries. What's the assumption here? The assumption here is that you already use the services of your employees. And following the accrual basis, once you use something, you record expense, right? So under equity, you record salaries expense and from the word paid you know that money is involved cash is involved right so under assets you write cash 
Now, use the point of view of the company. The company paid. So, what happens to the cash of the company? It decreased. And then for the expenses, of course, it increased. It increased because you were able to incur. You were able to use something, so expense will increase. Now, what's the effect of this one to your assets? Cash decrease will lead to decrease to your assets by 20. And if you increase the expense, this is same with drawing. If you increase this one, it will lower the amount of your equity. Next, rendered services on account. What does it mean? If you are the seller in the transaction, if you see the word on account, it just means that you don't have any collection yet. And because of that, instead of recognizing cash, you will recognize accounts receivable. If you're the buyer, on account will tell you that you don't have any payments yet. And since you were not able to pay cash, you will just go ahead and increase your accounts payable. So in this case, since you rendered services, you are the seller. And since you were not able to collect money from these services, you will recognize accounts receivable instead of cash. So let me set the uh, equation first. And you will be touching under equity service revenue. Why? This is following the accrual basis from the first video. It says there that once you were able to do the service, rendered service, regardless of money, it's revenue. But since you were not able to get cash from this one because it says on account, no? You will recognize accounts receivable. Eventually, your accounts receivable will be converted to cash. But for now, it's accounts receivable. So I'll just write AR. How about the movements? Of course, the future collection of the company increase, so AR increase, and then revenue increase because it's recognized. If you increase your accounts receivable, what happens to your assets? Let's say this is 15 pesos. So it will increase the assets by 15 pesos. How about the increase in revenue? It will increase equity by 15 pesos. Next, purchase supplies on credit. So on credit, it's the same with on account. But here, you are the buyer. Anyway, let's set the equation first. You were able to get supplies. So under assets, you use supplies. Since the problem says on credit, you are the buyer here. It means that you don't have any payment yet. So instead of recognizing cash for the payment, you will recognize accounts payable. So I'll just write AP. And AP is under liabilities, right? Now, what happens to your supplies? Of course, it increased because you were able to get the supplies. How about the obligation? What happened to the obligation? Of course, the obligation increased. So this one, increase in supplies, will increase your assets by 30. And then for the accounts payable right here, it increased your liabilities by 30. And as you can see from the previous transactions up to this point, I was able to maintain the equality of the accounting equation. Next. So let's try this one. Purchase equipment for cash. You were able to get equipment because you purchased it. And equipment is under assets. And to get this equipment, you paid cash, which is under assets what happened to your equipment since you were able to get this equipment your equipment increased but since you paid cash your cash decreased so this one will increase your asset by 10 while this one will decrease your assets by 10 so plus 10 minus 10 it's zero zero left side zero right side equal next collected five peso from a credit customer since you are able to collect that's cash automatically so cash increase and then that money was taken from a credit customer meaning customer who owes you and since that customer was able to pay already you will now go ahead and decrease your accounts receivable from that customer anyway this one will increase your assets by five while this one will decrease your assets by 5. So plus 5 minus 5 equals 0. 0 left side, 0 right side. Next, receive cash for future services. So right away you have cash. And it's an increase because you received. You will not record revenue here because you were not able to do service yet. So you cannot apply accrual basis. Because it says here future. You still have not done it. So you will not 
be recognizing any revenue. Now, what would you recognize in this case? You will recognize a liability because you owe that person who gave you the money services. And that is called your unearned revenue. And unearned revenue is not a revenue, it's a liability. It's a current liability to do service in the future. So you increase your unearned revenue. So this one will increase the cash by 10. Well, this one will increase the obligation by 10. Again, it's an obligation to do service in the future. But once you were able to do the service, for example, you were able to do the 5 peso service. So what will happen after this one is your unearned revenue, I will just write you are, will decrease by 5. And then, since you were able to do that 5, right? You will recognize service revenue, it will increase by 5. So, plus 5. Left side, 0. Right side, 0. So eventually, your liability will be diminished in exchange for revenue. Okay? So that's the logic. So I'll proceed. Paid rent in advance. So automatically, you have cash for paying. It decreases. You will not be recognizing rent expense yet because if you say paid rent in advance, it's telling you that you were not able to stay yet. So instead of recognizing an expense, you will recognize an asset. It's called prepaid rent. The prepaid rent will increase. You will not recognize rent expense yet because you have not used anything yet. So you cannot apply approval basis. You will start with prepaid rent first. But once you are already staying in the area, you will gradually reduce your prepaid rent in exchange for rent expense because you're using already. But anyway, for this one, you just paid in advance. So that will not give you a right to recognize any expense because you have not used anything yet. This is advanced payment only, okay? So decrease in cash will uh, decrease your assets by 10 and this one will increase your assets by 10. Last one. So this is connected to the previous one. You used 50% of the prepaid asset. This is the prepaid rent yesterday. So how do you now do that? You were able to use half of this, 50% of that. So since you were able to use half of that, your prepaid rent will decrease by 5. And since you were able to use already 5 of your advance payment, you can now go ahead and record an expense. And since you were able to recognize, it's added. And then, if you increase rent expense, it will decrease your equity. So left side 5, right side 5. And that's it for this video. Of course, there are other transactions, but what I provided here are some of the common ones. So hopefully with this discussion, you can able to analyze other business transactions.